Today, we're talking about seven white t-shirt fragrances. Fragrances that are gonna have you smelling fresh and clean, just easy to wear stuff for spring and summertime or fall or winter, whenever, who cares? Hey friends, Ash here with Jet Sense. Hope you're doing well. And I nailed the wardrobe today, talking about white t-shirt scents and uh, but that's okay, because we're gonna talk about these white t-shirt fragrances, even though I've got on a red t-shirt. Uh, this is a video that a bunch of different people have done, and I've had it on the back burner for a while, but today we're gonna do it. So let's jump into it. Because I make the rules here, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a couple extra fragrances at the end, just for fun. You know, could have just added one more on, then it would be a, a 10. You know, a top 10 list. We got a good mix here. Some of these are cheaper, some are more expensive like usual, I like to throw in a bunch of different things. We're gonna kick it off with a really obvious fragrance here. It is Prada Lome Low. Low, 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 low. Neroli, iris, ginger, powdery notes, and woods are some of the notes in the fragrance. It's got that Prada DNA, and frankly, I could have done this whole list with just Prada fragrances. It would have been kind of a boring list, but realistically, we, we probably could have done that. Prada Infusion Dome, Prada Amber Pour Homme, Prada Loam, Prada Loam Low, Prada Loam Water Splash, Prada Purple Rain, Prada Luna Rosa, Prada Luna Rosa O Sport, Prada Luna Rosa Sport. Yeah, we could have done the whole thing with just Prada. So if you're not a big fan of Prada Loam Low, just replace this with whatever Prada fragrance you are a fan of, and we'll pretend like that's the first fragrance we're talking about, cool? This one is fresh, it's soapy, it's clean. Like I mentioned with the note breakdown, it's a bit powdery. It's got more of a, a fresh aspect to it than the original Prada Loam does, but it doesn't fall too far from that Prada Loam tree. It's pretty similar to the original. One of the better office fragrances you're ever gonna find because if you find somebody offended by this fragrance, you know that that person is in fact not a human. Like in Men in Black, that's somebody that's impersonating a human. You should probably stay away from that that thing because if they get you alone somewhere, you know, they could like, like the thing, you know, John Carpenter, the thing, nobody. That one guy knows what I'm talking about. Cool. It's just really inoffensive, what I'm trying to say. I've never found a person that has smelled Prada Loam low and been like, oh, oh, what is that? Up next, it's Hat Libre d'Orange. Cologne, look at that sticker, it's shiny. Yeah, it's, it's easy to entertain me. I see that and I'm like, oh, rainbow colors, neat. I see green and blue and orange, wow. It does look good though. Uh, frankly, I think this clean presentation with the little shiny sticker on there looks really nice. This one has citrus, mint, white florals, musk, and some woods as well. It's got a similarity to some really popular fragrances out there. A little similar to Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford. A little similar to Bright Neroli from Ferrari. And a little similar to Grand Neroli from Atelier Cologne. Now I'm gonna link all of these below, but this one and one of the others that I have coming up later, those are going to be at Twisted Lily. If you ever shop there, they're a great niche. Uh, fragrance store, use the code GENTS10. Save yourself 10% off. Look, I spelled it out for you right here. G GENTS10, G-E-N-T-S-10. Cologne has a fantastic citrusy, semi-green soapy opening. It's very fresh, it's uplifting, ultra clean. As it dries down, you do get those floral aspects coming out and a little bit of musk and some woodiness and some clean patchouli and the dry down. Thankfully, the performance on that is not complete garbage because a lot of times fragrances that have that, you know, super clean white floral soapy feel to them don't really last. They just hit and they smell great and you go, oh, awesome, I'm gonna smell good today. Then you go outside, the heat hits you and the fragrance goes, I'm out of here. <laughs> now the performance here is not amazing, but at least you can smell it. It'll last about five to six hours. Projection is moderate. We'll say best in the first hour though. After that, it sits a bit closer, but you know, I'll take it. Also, as far as niche fragrances go, not that expensive. So that's another plus. Now this next fragrance, I like a lot. I liked it when it first came out and it grew on me more and more over time. I think it's really nice, but a bunch of you out there do not seem to like it as much as I do. The One Gray. Yeah, some of you out there approach this like your Gollum from Lord of the Rings. 
And no, I don't mean when he says, my precious. I mean when he's like, we hates it. We hates it, Dotin Cabana's the one gay. Yeah, that was a top notch, uh, top notch impersonation. Uh, somebody hit me up, put me in your movie. Thank you. Grapefruit, vetiver, cardamom, and tobacco, some of the notes in the fragrance. It does have the one DNA in here, just not as prominent as a lot of people were hoping. It's actually basically taking the one and then putting it through a little machine and tweaking it and turning it into an office businessman. So it comes into the machine and it's this swap sexy guy. And then he steps in, comes out of the machine and now he's a businessman. And people didn't like that. They were like, no, no, no. The one is not a businessman. He's just a sexy guy. I like it. I think the one gray is really nice. Like I said, great office time fragrance. The vetiver really gives it a sophisticated, classy, gentlemanly kind of edge. And the one DNA is still there. It's just buried, buried deep down. So it's a businessman who internally wishes he could go to the party. Next up, we'll, we'll go from one gentlemanly kind of fragrance to another, because this one has it right in the name. Gentleman Cologne from Givenchy. Bergamot, Iris, Ambroxan, Vetiver once again, and Pettigrain, some of the notes in this scent. And I love the opening. It's got this little bit of a watery feel to it. The Iris in here is not the same as the Iris in Prada Lome Low. Here, it's much more of a powdery type of Iris fragrance. Here, it is a, a fresher, livelier Iris fragrance. As I mentioned, has kind of an aquatic feel to it to me, almost like it's been spritzed with water, iris with water droplets all over it. Dry down, typically masculine with the ambroxan and the vetiver, very clean the whole way through. And that's another one that is fantastic for the office or casual day-to-day -day use. Now let's go with the Maison Francis Kirkjean fragrance, Aqua Universalis, but really it could be Aqua Vitae, it could be Aqua Celestia, you know, it could be a lot of fragrances from the house, frankly. This one has Lily of the Valley, Citrus, Musk, and Orange Blossom as some of the notes. So once again, you're seeing kind of a recurring theme here with white florals and citrus with a bit of musk. That is a hard recipe to screw up when we're talking about white t-shirt, you know, fresh, clean type of scents. Now, can you still screw it up with that formula? Yes, you can, absolutely. But you gotta, you gotta put in some effort to completely foobar that. And this is the one that I mentioned earlier is also a Twisted Lily and blah, 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 Gents 10. This one's really clean and soapy once again. It's fresh, it is 100% unisex. Ladies can wear this, guys can wear this. Actually, the brand themselves, they say that this is made for anyone to be used anywhere, anytime. So basically they're pitching it as the ultimate in versatility. I don't know that I'd go that far because I think that with the performance here and the way this one comes across, it's not as well suited for wintertime use or you know late fall when it's starting to get really chilly. I don't think so personally. I think it's more spring and summer, but the house themselves think, nah, use it anytime. And technically, I guess that's true. You can wear whatever you want whenever you want, really. The reason I picked that one over Aqua Vitae and over Aqua Celestia for this video is because that one I find to have more of that that soapy clean vibe that I'm kind of going for here. Now this next one is one that I've worn for years and years and years. It's a great staple to have in a fragrance collection because it's so easy to pull off and it's not that expensive at discounters either. It is Versace Pour Homme. Now this one is gonna give you a similar scent profile to Chanel Allure Homme Sport, which is more expensive than Versace Pour Homme. Again, if we're talking at discounters. They are, however, not the exact same. And believe it or not, between the two, I personally prefer the Versace. I know some people are gonna say, no, 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 no. You can't say that, man. Chanel is always better. But in this circumstance, I actually like how this one smells off my skin a little more. Allure Home Sport, great scent. Really, really nice. But it has a little more density, a little more of a, a creamy feel with the citrus in it. It's a little bit heavier off my skin. This one is fresher, a little bit lighter, and brisker. And so between the two, for what I would want to wear them for, or you know, where I'd want to wear them to, Versace Pour Homme usually is a better choice. 
But if you prefer Allure Home Sport yourself, I'm not gonna argue that for a second. That one's amazing also. This one's got lemon, bergamot, neroli, and tonka, along with some floral notes in it. And really, you can just look at the, the presentation. It's one of those times where everything you need to know about the fragrance is right there in front of you. That light blue coloration, the simple silver accents of the bottle. This one, amazing for spring, amazing for summer. People love the way that it smells. It doesn't perform like a monster, but it's really not supposed to. It lasts long enough and you can douse yourself with that and no one is gonna say anything negatively about it. Now this last one's a little bit different. Pretty much every fragrance up until this point has had either a, a silver, blue, or white coloration to the bottle and the presentation. And the reason for that is because, again, they're trying to get across how the fragrance smells. And when we're talking about a white t-shirt, fresh, clean fragrance, typically those scents are gonna be packaged up in, in something, getting that across coloration-wise. This one is green, and I threw it in here just because I gotta get in some green. That sounds weird. I like green notes and fragrances. That's what I mean. Gotta get in some green, brother. <laughs> it is Lacoste Match Point. Basil, grapefruit, cashmere, and vetiver, some of the notes in the fragrance. This one has a pretty good amount of sweetness off the top, frankly. That grapefruit comes across in an almost synthetically sweet way, but it's actually really pleasing. Basil gives it a nice herbal touch, that, that green feeling that I was talking about before. And then in the dry down, again, you've got some standard masculine notes there. Vetiver, which you've heard, I think, in least a couple of the fragrances so far, and then cashmere, which is a very popular aroma chemical in men's fragrances nowadays, giving it kind of a warm, fuzzy, woodsy feel. Match Point gonna be a little bit more of a springtime fragrance for me, though you could pull it off in summer as well, obviously. And it's another one that that just grows on me over time. Is it simple? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really simple. It's, it's Lacoste. What are you expecting? Like I talked about with Prada earlier, there are a bunch of Lacoste fragrances that you could throw into this list and you could make it work. The brand itself is really centered around just coming across sporty, fresh, and clean with most of what they do. Now I'm gonna throw in a couple extras here just really quickly, uh, basically just for the heck of it. Now this one, you might be saying, hey, you just put that in this video because it's a flanker that came after Dracar Noir. And you know what? You're right. Yeah, actually, that's that's the only reason I'm doing it. But I am doing it, and it's Dracar Essence by Guy La Roche. Look at it. It's like Dracar Noir if it were a blue fragrance. It retains the ultra cheap cap. Gotta love that. Retains having absolutely nothing around the crimped collar. Gotta love that too. Now, if you can pick this up for a decent price, it really is not that bad. But if you pay forty dollars for it, you're gonna have a bad day. You pay $20 for it, not so bad. $15, even better, $40, hmm, mm -mm, don't do it. Mint, grapefruit, lavender, and musk, some of the notes in the fragrance. I'm really glad to see lavender in there, keeping that, you know, kind of old school masculine vibe slightly underneath the fresher overtones of the fragrance, which is the mint and the grapefruit here. It does have a slight, we'll say, throwback after shavy scent profile to it to an extent, though it does have a sporty gym kind of vibe over top of that. As I said, it's really not that bad, but you have to get it for the right price and you have to go into it expecting something that's just clean, slightly zingy and a little bit generic in a throwback kind of way. Is it as good as Dracar Noir? No, don't. Stupid question, like why would you even ask that? No, of course not. But the bottle is similar. And uh, I just wanted to put it in here, yeah. Now this last one is really good. It's Biggerod Concentre, and this is from Frederick Mall. Bitter orange, rose, hay, and cedar, some of the notes in the fragrance. Has a bit of a similarity to Eau d'Orange Vert from Hermes. How do you like that pronunciation? I think I butchered it. And Terre d'Hermes. Oh. Yeah, so two Hermes fragrances. The quality on this is chef's kiss. It's really, really, really good. Extremely classy. The longevity is not bad, but the the projection, you know, could be better. It sits a little close to the skin pretty early on. But this right here is close to being the pinnacle of that that clean woodsy, kind of tart, a little bit of a bitter citrus Jean-Claude Elena vibe. Like this is, this is awesome. 
So there we go, seven, technically nine, white t-shirt scents that are gonna have you smelling fresh and clean, and uh, frankly, just have you smelling awesome. And there are so many fragrances that I wanted to include here, but I couldn't because I can't do like a top 50 men's white t-shirt fragrances or else I'm gonna be here for like two hours. And you'll be here for like four minutes before you click off the video. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.